Hello, and welcome to Ask Dr. Amy. Today, we're going to talk about febrile seizures. And first, there's my little disclaimer. Like all my videos, this is for information and education purposes. It's not medical advice because I don't know your child's specific medical history. And these are also not connected in any way to any hospital or organization that I work for. All right, for febrile seizures, the word febrile just means with fever or under the condition of fever. I completely understand that to watch your kid have a seizure is a very scary experience. It's normal to panic and you should bring your kid in for an evaluation for reasons that we'll go over. So go to the hospital. This video does not, definitely does not replace an exam at the hospital, but my goal here is to hopefully help you panic less and explain what is a febrile seizure. What are the important things to consider? How do doctors or pediatricians think about febrile seizures? And then what should we do about them? So when a kid has a seizure in the setting of fever, our most important two questions are, one, is this a simple febrile seizure? And number two, what caused the fever? There are many kinds of seizures in both adults and in children. And a seizure in general is just abnormal electrical activity in the brain. Sometimes to look for that activity or to diagnose a seizure, we do what's called an EEG, an electroencephalogram. This is where they stick those little electrodes on the head and record the activity of the brain over a certain period of time. So this is an example of a normal EEG. And this image is from a lecture by Dr. John Middlechap at the Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago. And this over here is the activity during a seizure. Do you see how it's abnormal, it's disorganized? This pattern here is why during seizures, people are usually unconscious. They can't respond, they can't control their body. And especially for a parent, very scary to watch in a kid. I just wanted to show you what seizures in general look like on the EEG. And we'll talk about febrile seizures, which is a kind of seizure that stands alone that happens from the fever in kids. But in people who do have epilepsy, and this is people of all ages who have a long-term seizure disorder, they can also have seizures with fever because the fever lowers the threshold that they already have to seizures. So epilepsy or other long-term seizure disorders is not what we're talking about. So let's go back to our question number one. What defines a simple febrile seizure? And this is in kids, again, who have no underlying seizure disorder. Number one is age. The age group we think of is six months to 60 months. The duration, febrile seizures should be 15 minutes or shorter for them to qualify as simple. The frequency, there shouldn't be more than one episode in 24 hours. Number four is self-explanatory. They should have a fever, which is greater than 38 degrees Celsius. And then lastly, without central nervous system infection. We'll talk a little more about that in just a second. But the most common infection that we worry about is meningitis. So you have to have all five of these conditions to qualify as a simple febrile seizure. And if they don't meet one of these, then we go into complex febrile seizures, which is, like the name says, a little more complicated. It might involve more of a workup. But all the data we're talking about today is going to apply to simple only. Now, anywhere from 2% to 5% of all children have simple febrile seizures or have at least one. That's actually a huge number in terms of diseases prevalence. And when things are common, we know more about it because there's more data. So what we know about it is so far that there's no increase in death, no increase in disability or any kind of brain damage, which might lead to mental retardation or the kind of lasting damage. And for a kid who has had a simple febrile seizure, the risk of them developing epilepsy or a regular long-term seizure disorder is only very slightly higher than the general population. And the main risk here is actually just recurrence so another episode of the same thing with another fever would qualify as a recurrence, and that chance is one third. So now that we've defined what simple febrile seizures are, the second question is what caused the fever? And the most common cause is just your run of the mill virus, the colds and the respiratory infections that kids all get very frequently. While that's the most common, the reason we think about what caused the fever is because we don't want to miss other causes. And the big thing to think about is whether or not we could have meningitis. So here is a picture of the central nervous system, CNS. We have the brain and the spinal cord. And meningitis is an infection in the layers of things that wrap around the brain and the spinal cord, which are called meninges. 
they are also part of the central nervous system. So I put a star next to meningitis because it's a very dangerous condition. Unlike febrile seizures, meningitis can cause disability, can cause brain damage, and even death in some cases. So we never want to miss this. Now, if you were paying close attention over here, you'll say, hey, but if we have meningitis, that would disqualify the case as a simple fibro seizure because we said no CNS infection here, and you'd be right. So usually in practice, these two questions are often answered together. As we're trying to determine if we have a simple fibro seizure, we're also making sure we don't have meningitis. The distinction here is important because the clinical picture can look very similar. You see, fever can cause febrile seizure, but meningitis can also cause both fever and seizure. So before we let ourselves off the hook and just say febrile seizure, we better make sure it's not meningitis causing both. The common signs of meningitis include neck stiffness, extreme headache, changes in alertness. Or if the kid is unvaccinated, there's an increased chance of meningitis because they're not protected from two serious bugs that can cause a severe infection. So this is why your pediatrician is always moving the kid's head, trying to test out the neck, trying to make them touch their chin to their chest. It's all to evaluate for meningitis. And when in doubt, given how the kid looks, or if the kid is not vaccinated, or we're really just worried about meningitis, sometimes a lumbar puncture is necessary, an LP. A lumbar puncture is a needle being put into the meningeal space from the back to get some fluid from the central nervous system so we can analyze it for infection. So if your doctor is recommending a lumbar puncture, it's not so much because of the seizure, but because we're worried that meningitis might have caused the whole picture, in which case it's not a simple fibril seizure. But if we're not thinking meningitis and we meet all the other qualifications of simple fibril seizure, the fever is most likely caused by a virus or in some cases a bacterial infection that's not in the central nervous system. So that leads us to the next question. What do we do about it? For fevers caused by viruses, we just treat the fever. And if you are looking for some guidance on fever medications, how much to give, which one to give, please see my other tutorial that's about medicine dosing for fever. Now, if we find a bacterial infection that caused the fever, then we would treat both the fever and treat the infection with some antibiotics. And like I said in my video about fever in general in kids, the high temperature itself is usually not dangerous. Even in this case, when it causes a seizure, it's a self-limited condition that shouldn't make us more afraid of fever in general. But if the kid does have a febrile seizure or a history of it, it is a good idea to treat the fever, just because that recurrence risk is so high at one third. But please keep in mind that even diligently treating the fever will not necessarily reduce the risk of febrile seizures to zero. And there's some debate about which feature of the fever really causes that seizure. So if we look at time here versus temperature, and this red line here is the threshold for fever, the rate of rise is how quickly a temperature climbs to become a fever. And the objective height here is just how high the fever is. And we're debating about which one of these determines if we have a seizure or not. And there's not clear evidence to support either theory. What we do know is that it's not possible to 100% prevent febrile seizures, even with very consistent round-the-clock fever treatment. The temperature can start rising at any point in this interval and can lead to a seizure at unknown points. So treat the fever because it will still reduce the risk, but if your child still has a febrile seizure, it's not a failure of the treatment, and it's not your fault that he or she still had a fever and the seizure still happened. With simple febrile seizures, the most common thing is that they simply grow out of them. It's part of the definition, right? Six months to 60 months. And for most kids, they stop after five years of age as the brain matures. If we have determined that it's a simple febrile seizure, then we don't need to do any more tests. We don't need to do an EEG to look at the brain. There's nothing really what we're looking for. So aside from treating the fever that's in the prevention, the other good thing you can do if you happen to be there to see the beginning of a seizure is to keep in mind the timeline. It's helpful to doctors to know how long the seizure took place. I know this is extremely hard to do. And when you see the seizure, it's not intuitive to go start the stopwatch. So don't worry if you don't get it. Estimates are fine. It's just that estimates sometimes are not accurate because when you're looking at a child seizing, one minute can feel like an hour. So if you do remember to glance at the time, that time interval can be very helpful information because again, the 15 minute mark is part of the definition for simple febrile seizure. So all in all, what we know about simple febrile seizures is that they are common and benign without serious long-term consequences. 
I hope this video has made you understand a little bit more about simple febrile seizures and become a little less worried about it. If you have a question about anything we talked about or there's another topic you would like to see, please leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll see you next time.